welcome to technical vijay channel today we will see class 10 mathematics first chapter real numbers here before going to understand what is real numbers we will see basics of some of the numbers like natural numbers first we will understand natural numbers natural numbers are those which are starting from 1 2 3 like this up to n these are called as natural numbers then comes whole numbers that is whole numbers here whole numbers are starting from 0 0 1 2 3 up to n these are called whole numbers some numbers are there like 2 4 6 8 like this are there they are called as even numbers even numbers and some numbers are there 1 3 5 7 like this this type of series they are called as odd numbers odd numbers now we will see what is integers integers here in the number line 0 1 2 3 up to n and in the negative side also minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 up to minus n this whole series is called integers whereas these are called as positive integers positive integers and these are called as negative integers so integers are whole from minus n to plus n including 0 so here they may come like this 1.5 also 2.5 also this all the series are called as integers next comes prime numbers prime numbers are those numbers which are divisible by 1 and the number itself the number itself that is the number which is divisible by 1 and the number itself are called as prime numbers like 1 3 5 7 9 will not be a prime number because it is divisible by 3 also hence it is not a prime number and some numbers are there which are called as composite numbers composite numbers are same like prime numbers but they are divisible also by other numbers also that is composite numbers are prime numbers which are divisible by other number also they are called as composite number like 4 6 8 like this 4 is divisible by 2 also 6 is divisible by 3 also 8 is again divisible by 2 also hence these are called composite numbers next comes rational numbers rational numbers are those numbers those can be written in the form of p by q whereas whereas condition is that q should not be equal to 0 that is denominator 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 must not be equal to 0 like for example 4 by 0 is it a rational number no it is not a rational number because denominator is 0 whereas 0 divided by 4 it is a rational number this can be represented in the form of a p by q hence these are called as rational numbers some numbers are there uh, like uh, 25 by 4 here this can be divided that is 4 6 ja, 0.25 so 6.25 this can be divisible and here we will get the definite decimal expansion we will get this is this will be terminates this will be terminates after definite decimal definite decimal expansion definite expansion some numbers are there they are 10 by 3 suppose if you divide this one this will be equal to 3.3333 up to we don't know how many times it is repeating but here this is non terminating this is non terminating non terminating but repeating but repeating okay so this is also a rational number this is also a rational number here rational number meaning is nothing but this can be written in the form of p by q where the condition is q is not equal to 0 that is denominator should not be equal to 0 so this is the first condition second condition is the number will be terminates after a definite decimal expansion and the third condition is it is a non terminating but repeating this type of these three types are also called as rational numbers next comes irrational number irrational numbers here here irrational numbers are nothing but they cannot be written in the form of p by q this cannot be written in the form of p by q like pi pi is nothing but this we can write as 22 by 7 but see here 7 3 is a 21 point 10 1 3 point 1 4 7 2 3 4 3 point 
3.147237 like this it is continuated you observe here it is also a non terminating it is also non terminating but also it is not repeating not repeating such type of numbers are called as irrational numbers rational numbers three condition p by q can be written and q should not be equal to zero and it should be it is and it is terminating after a definite decimal expansion and it is a non terminating but repeating whereas irrational number is it is non terminating but not repeating this is called irrational numbers and you see whatever we have seen these numbers like natural numbers whole numbers even numbers odd numbers integers prime number composite number rational number and irrational numbers and irrational number all these are called as real numbers that is real numbers okay real numbers are inclusion of all the numbers that is whole series this can be best explained by this diagram first we have seen natural numbers natural numbers means they are starting from 1 2 3 up to n and then comes whole numbers whole numbers are including of 0 means 0 is here and 1 2 n are here natural numbers then whole numbers is 0 including 0 all are whole numbers then comes integers integers will add negative and positive numbers okay these are called integers then comes rational number rational number means they can be written in the form of p by q and also they are terminating after a definite decimal expansion and also they are non terminating but repeating they are called rational numbers rational number come uh, includes all the numbers and here irrational number irrational number they cannot be written in the form of p by q and they are non terminating but not repeating they are called irrational number this whole the series is called real numbers okay students now you can understand real numbers is nothing but the combination of all the natural numbers whole numbers integers rational numbers and irrational numbers okay this is the meaning of real numbers okay students now we will see what is euclid division algorithm first we will see what is algorithm then division algorithm after that euclid's division algorithm an algorithm is a series of well defined steps or set of instructions written for solving a particular problem that is called algorithm then division algorithm is nothing but an algorithm given for making a division so as we know that from the childhood we know how to divide two numbers for example 7 if you want to divide by 3 3 into 2 is nothing but 6 then we have to put uh, 6 here then subtract from the dividend then uh, we will get a remainder as 1 so in this way there are certain steps that we already know that is called this is called as a divisor and this is called as dividend and this is called as quotient and this is called as reminder so these things already we know that is the steps already we have given the in this way only we have to make a division that is called division algorithm that is the steps followed to make a division is nothing but a division algorithm and then what is Euclid's division algorithm Euclid division algorithm is nothing but the steps what we have followed is given by a scientist called Euclid he is a Greek mathematician so he has given this algorithm hence it is called Euclid's division algorithm and then what is lemma lemma is nothing but a proven statement used for proving another statement that is a proven statement used for proving another statement what is it as we know that sun rises in the east then afterwards so by knowing that we can assume that or we can prove that the sun will set at the west so lemma is nothing but a proven statement already it has been approved and it is used for proving another statement that is called lemma so this uh, euclid's division algorithm is also called as euclid's division lemma okay so now we will see this one divisor dividend quotient and remainder so this uh, dividend can be written as that is dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder according to this formula a is equal to bq plus r where a is a dividend b is a divisor and a b that is such that remainder such that remainder should satisfy this condition that is it should be equal to 0 or it should be less than b this condition should satisfy 
then afterwards by knowing uh, this euclid's division algorithm we can find the hcf of any two numbers that is highest common factor highest common factor highest common factor as we already know that we have to find out the highest common factor such that for ab so we have to find out the factors for a and find the factors for b suppose for a factors a 1 2 3 then factors for b will be 2 and 2 3 and 4 then the common factor will be 2 and 3 then within this common factor which is highest this 3 is the highest this 3 is the hcf of a and b like this we can calculate so this can be best understood by solving the questions that is exercises